Art Center for the Arts encompasses drama, arts, theater, production, set design, visual arts, language arts, under one umbrella. And what that is is to deliver community theater. We've done Greece, we've done The Sound of the Music, we've done The King and I. So from Broadway down to Main Street here in Wallingford, uh, theater comes alive every summer. And it comes together every summer. Children as young as four and as old as 99 participate uh, year round. As one, one voice, one mission is to educate and make the arts come alive. And the Wallingford Center for the Arts is open to anybody interested in being a part of this. Um, the membership, again, is inclusive of free acting and choral lessons. The benefit of Mary Ellen Eccles, our executive director and founder of the theater and the Center for the Arts. And we unite youth, the adults, the colleges, and interns from all races, creed, religion, and background. It includes folks and families from around the town. Well, hello everyone. My name is Edward McCarver, and we're going to spend some time today talking about the Wallingford Community Theater. Uh, the Wallingford Community Theater was presenting an evening on Broadway celebrating 10 years of musicals done by the theater. Scenes from The Wizard of Oz, Beauty and the Beast, The King and I, Music Man in Greece will be highlighted, along with a special appearance by The Honeymooners, Lucy and Ricky Ricardo, and Fred and Ethel Mertz. Now, performances are Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Sheehan High School in Wallingford. The show begins at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available online at wctheater.com brownpapertickets.com or at Gallagher's Travel Shop, Amici Salon and Spa, and Jeremiah's. Tickets are $15 for adults and $10 for children. Twelve. will indulge me for one sure. second. We want to uh, acknowledge the accomplishments of one of our alumni here at uh, WPAA. We want to congratulate Eric Schrader, who was nominated for an Emmy recently in the category of Outstanding picture editing for an unstructured reality program. Eric is editor of Life Below Zero, seen on the National Geographic Network. Eric was a staff member here at WPAA in the early 2000s before moving out to the West Coast. Congratulations to Eric Schrader on his Emmy nomination. The Emmy Awards are scheduled for September 17th in, uh, in Los Angeles. And uh, we wish Eric uh, the, uh, the best of luck. I always used to say that the East Coast loss is the West Coast game. Yeah. So uh, we may have a future Emmy Award winner with um, uh, Eric Schrader. We may have some future Tony Award winners Absolutely. here uh, with us now. We want to introduce uh, first two, uh, two old friends of uh, someone who's uh, actually two people who are no strangers here to the camera. Please welcome Mary Ellen Kingsland Eccles and Matthew Bennett. And uh, in between them, we have uh, Hannah Stein. Now, Matt and Hannah are actors in the play, and uh, Mary Ellen Kingsland Eccles, who needs no introduction, so, uh, is uh, directing the play in this, the, uh, the tenth year, uh, a decade right. of, uh, right, right. of uh, doing plays. This year, it's kind of different, because you're doing ten years incorporating scenes from different plays rather than a rather than a direct play. So the first question I, I wanted to ask, whatever made you decide to do what seems to be <laughs> a Herculean type uh, It is. We've kind this. of nicknamed it the monster. It's <laughs> enormous. <laughs> it's huge. We've done so many really great shows, and we kind of wanted to touch on as many of them as we could and tie it all together. You know, kind of have a, a it's, let the uh, audience celebrate with us and have a party. Was this an idea you had uh, once year nine ended, once Willy Wonka ended? Did you decide that... Uh, well, we got together um, about a month after the sh last show closed, and it, it actually was a suggestion by Dave Stein, um, our, our set designer, and we were saying, you know, as we always do at that point, what do we want to do next year? And I said, well, it's our 10th. And Dave said, you know, we really ought to do highlights. We ought to do like a review. So I thought that was a great idea. But unbelievable amount of work. Yeah, well, what's, what's the biggest difference in, in preparing for a production like this as opposed to a... Well, you have... 
we have we had so many people come out uh, for the show from all over Connecticut. So we have a tremendous amount of talent. We have a lot of newcomers, a lot of kids, youth, lots of ad adults, and it's just really. Um, really great that they're um, all, you know, we have a, a set of leads for each. We're, we're highlighting some of the, four of the shows quite a bit. And we have leads for each one of those shows. So now you're dealing with multiple casts, and then in between we have crossovers and little segments. So all of that has to be created and, and uh, tied together, and all of that has to be rehearsed. Now, a crossover, for those that, that may not know, is defined as when the curtain is, is closed doing it, it, The curtain can be open. It's just actors crossing over the stage, basically. And, and you can use it for lots of different purposes. We, we're using it um, in this show to share some of the young actors that, say, we're like um, Violet Hannah's sister, Erica Stein, is, is uh, coming out as Violet that she was last year in Willy Wonka, but she's actually doing a tap dance that has nothing to do with Willy Wonka. And we have some three little young brand new to WCT actresses who are going to be with her on that. And that kind of buys some time for set changes and costume changes because when you have 100 people in the cast um, and all those shows, you have all that costuming to do. So we're very fortunate. We have a huge costume shop. And what we don't have, like for Beauty and the Beast, we're renting those costumes. But it's it's a big job for everybody. The uh, the community theater is actually part of the Wallingford Center for the Arts, which you founded. Uh, what made you decide to start the Wallingford Center for the Arts one decade ago? Well, yeah, I guess I've been thinking about it most of my life. Um, I had a great experience at Lyman Hall. Um, I, I called them my dream team. It was Marion Lacey, Ronnie Granucci, Harold Crump, and Larry Vitale. And we did, yeah, you might remember. They are you're, legendary you're, names. Yeah, yeah. and they, I, they were so amazing. And I had so much fun with that. I used to watch Irma Zola and Charlie Houlihan. They were teachers. Back then, the WEA used to put on a musical every year to raise money for scholarships. And um, those were fun. And I just fell in love with that. And as I got older, to me, it was, it was twofold. It was a way to give back to the community. And I also felt that, I mean, I was a tomboy. I was a jock. I played every sport there is. I played varsity sports in college. But I felt like I had balance. And I, I kind of felt like, geez, I wasn't seeing opportunities for kids to do both. Or if they don't want to do a sport, what, what else can they do? Um, so I thought maybe this was a way that I might be able to contribute. Again, we're talking with uh, Mary Ellen Kingsland Eccles. We're talking about the Wallingford Community Theater running uh, at Sheehan High School, and evening of Broadway celebrating 10 years of musicals done by the Wallingford Theater. Again, performances are Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Sheehan High School in Wallingford. The show begins at 7.30 p.m. Uh, we have two of the actors here, uh, Matthew Bennett at the far end and Diana Stein in the middle, and uh, and Matt, I'll, I'll start with you, if May, I want to ask sure. you both this. Uh, how did you originally get started? Well, it was one of those life-changing moment kind of situations where one choice made all the difference. Um, back in high school, they were putting on their musical at Sheehan, and the director, I happened to be in a study hall where the teacher who directed the shows was the overseer, and she was talking with someone in the cast, and they were like, we just need more guys for this show. And I was sitting right there, and she was like, Matt, do you want to be in the show? And I was like, oh, okay, okay. And that was where it started, and I just fell in love with it and continued doing it from there. And Hannah? Uh, I was a dancer and a singer uh, since, like, three years old. And I never really did theater before that, so it was eight years ago I heard about WCT, and I came and I, I auditioned for Music Man. And I got the part of Gracie Shin, and it just kind of clicked. Like, I absolutely fell in love with theater, and I've been doing it since. And they're both amazing. Yeah. They're both, we're very blessed to have both of them. How, um, I know there literally must be a cast of thousands, but, but how many cast members are there? It's about 100, 100, which is, which is a lot. And we probably have, oh, at least that many, if not twice that many, working behind the scenes. What's the age range? 
Oh, I think I think Kinley's our littlest. I think she's yeah. four. <laughs> no, and I wouldn't even venture to go who our eldest is. So. <laughs> This year, the uh, Wallingford Community Theater Repertory Group yes. uh, presented Lend Me a Tenor, which I understand was a huge success. Yes. From what I hear. Uh, <laughs> what, what is the difference between uh, repertory theater and the, and the summer theater? Well, repertory is run more like a professional theater. It's um, Usually, um, it involves actors who've had quite a bit of training and experience. Not always, because we had this year some newcomers who really had never done uh, a play before, and they, they worked hard and they did a great job. But we do we have the auditions, um, and and we work um, very hard on it, um, and we do make we do make cuts from those auditions. Um, never my favorite part, but in the summer. We really we started with the summer musical to begin with, and we really wanted to provide the opportunity for everybody. So there are there are no barriers to participating in 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 um, the summer musicals. So everyone that auditions, everyone who auditions gets, part. gets okay. part. If you're willing to put in the time and the work, you are more than welcome. Um, my, it's not so much. Uh, we try to find the best place um, for everybody to shine. Um, Everybody may not agree with our decisions, but we do what's best for the whole show. And Does it necessarily have to be on stage? Or can no. Um, many times we'll get a, a sibling who auditions to be on the show, but their sister or brother um, would love to do some artwork behind the scenes. So they're either out at the barn or backstage working on, on that sort of work. Um, yeah, no. Everybody has gifts to bring to the table, so we try to provide opportunities um, for everyone, and and not everybody wants to be on the stage, but you can learn so much in all of all of those areas, backstage or on stage. I know Matt, you appeared in uh, Lend Me a Tenor, and uh, Hannah, you appeared last year in the repertory production of Brighton Beach Memoirs. And as you do, Matt, uh, both years. Um, do you have a preference as to? And I'll begin with Hannah this time. Uh, do you have a preference as to? Repertory or the big stage? Um, I don't necessarily like one better than the other. Uh, the summer kind of encompasses everything because it's dancing, singing, acting. So that's more like a big flashy kind of production where repertory, there's a cast, I think there was eight in Brighton Beach Memoirs. Um, yeah. So it's kind of a small, there's a lot more focus on the acting part of it. Um, is that tougher to I think it is um, because it focuses a lot more on what you do, and especially when it's such a small cast, yeah. uh, you really have to define your character and figure out what you're going to do. Um, but I don't really have a preference. And Matt? Uh, for me, it comes down to really one thing. I have zero singing <laughs> training and <laughs> very little dancing training, so the repertory is definitely a better venue for me in that. It shows off the only talent I do have on the acting side of things. So. But he is such a good sport in the musicals. He's, I mean, he's all over the place. Um, and you also do some work with, with directing the musicals yeah, and, yeah. and helping out. Oh, with absolutely. He helps with, the, with the acting. Um, and I'll go to him if we if we have an area that's just not working, or I've written something but I haven't connected from A to B. And I'll go to Matt and say, "What do you think? How can we do this?" You know. So there is a lot of creative brainstorming between Matt and myself and, and Megan. And he he always has great ideas. He came up Let's with. Let's get Megan a plug. Megan. Yeah, Megan Shortell Prantantonio. I hope I said that right. Prantantonio. <laughs> choreographs the. And she's stage manager, and she works in production. She's she's like Matt because Matt's also our tech director, you know. So he's brilliant at that as well. So you know, um, nobody does one job. <laughs> <laughs> Typical theater. <laughs> Again, we're talking with Mary Ellen Pins and Eccles, uh, Hannah Stein, and Matt Bennett from the Wallingford Community Theater, the Wallingford Community Theater uh, summer play at evening on Broadway. Scheduled for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Sheehan High School in Wallingford. The show begins at 7.30 p.m. 
Tickets are available at wctheater.brownpapertickets.com or at Gallagher's Travel Shop, Amici Salon and Spa, and Jeremiah's. Tickets are $15 for adults, $10 for children 12 and under. Uh, so if we were all going, we'd have to pay $15. That's right. That's right. That's right. And also, um, they're available through cast members. And oh, okay. they, if there's any left, they'll be available at the door. Do you anticipate to be available at the door, or is it best to... We actually have a few, because that's a big auditorium. I want to say 600. I, can't, I don't remember. Um, she in high, yeah, she in high school. It's a pretty big, pretty big auditorium. We have sold out in the past, um, but um, if whatever's available, we stop selling online at a certain point. We stop selling at the venues at a certain point, and the cast sales stop at a certain point, and then everything else you have to go to the door and get it. And there's no change in price. You know, it's still the same. Now, even though it's Wallingford Community Theater. Um, out-of-town residents are eligible to take part in the production. Is that correct? Can you yes, talk about that a bit? That's, that's true. Um, I think um, it, it's, it's primarily, I mean, it's here for Wallingford. It's here to serve Wallingford. Um, but we are open to um, other communities. We have people coming from New Haven, Hamden, Cromwell, um, Prospect. I'm trying to think where else. I'm, I'm always... Honored and amazed when I see how far they come. You know. So even though it's Wallingford well, Community Theater, it doesn't necessarily, right. it's not limited. It's, it's not, not limited to, Wallingford. right, right. Okay. I would say predominantly it's Wallingford citizens, but, but we always get a lot from out of town, a lot from Meriden. We talked about the, uh, the Repertory Theater, which played um, at, uh, at the library over here, kind of a small, more intimate setting. And, uh, the summer play is usually, you know, is at the theater halls or the auditorium halls, right. seven or eight hundred. L let me start with the actors first, and Matt, Matt, I'll start with you. Do you have a preference? Do you like the coffee house type, the small, intimate setting, or do you prefer uh, standing room only? I think it depends on the show. Um, with a musical, you definitely like to have the stage, the kind of separation of the audience and the cast and everything, and you get. It's a big spectacle kind of thing, whereas the things that we do in the repertory yeah. at the library are much more intimate shows, and it's more fun for the audience to kind of be right there and feel like they're part of the action. Like, right. Lend Me a Tenor took place in a hotel room, and so the audience being so close, it almost felt like they were in the room yeah. with the cast and everything, watching the events unfold. And so it's... And the same with Brighton? Yeah it's, yeah, it's very dependent on the show and what you're looking for out of the show and everything. But yeah. And Hannah, do you? Yeah, I agree. I think for a musical, you know, to have it at somewhere like Sheen where there's there's a huge audience, right? You know, because you're singing and and the the big audience. But then for repertory, I think the smaller venue like the library uh, is definitely better, especially with with the comedy and the reaction between the audience um, and the actors, I think the smaller setting is definitely better for that. It's a different energy. Yeah, yeah. It really is. And we, when, we, when we think about what we're going to do for repertory versus the summer, we think very, very differently about it. We love that intimate feeling. <coughs> Has Dave and I when, and Matt, whenever we meet about it, we always talk about um, having a little long wharf, you know, or having a little Ivoryton or something, because we, we love that feeling in those theaters that, you know, you're really there with them. So you choose something um, that plays to that, that, that would be appropriate for that. That, that kind of segues uh, into my next question. Um, I know last year it was Willy Wonka, the year before it was Happy Days. Who, who decides on, on what plays to be formed. Is it something you do exclusively or do you... Do Not you ex no, no. It used to be, I mean, years and years ago um, it, when, you know, it was basically Megan and Megan and I, like the first year or two. Um, and then as, as Dave came on board and, and, you know, our team started to grow through the years and Matt came on board. So it's really, now it's something that, you know, we each kind of come with some ideas. We sit down, we talk about it. And um, we usually will go out to dinner and we'll sit and we'll throw it around and say, what do we want to do and stuff. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about what do we have, you know, because we, yeah, yeah. we have to balance the cost, 
you know, of, of how much we can spend. The shows are very, musicals are very expensive. They cost us about 30000 every really? summer. Yeah. We get grants for about a third of that, and we have to raise the rest of it ourselves. We, we do it every summer. Plus, on top of that, we, we raise money to give scholarships. So we'll be giving, you know, we give anywhere in the neighborhood of a $1,000 scholarship every year. So, yeah. Again, we're talking with, I'm sorry, Matt, did you? Yeah, well, um, when we kind of, for the decisions, we get, every year we get a lot of, uh, the cast members going, we should do this show next year, this show, and we take that into consideration when we're deciding, but there's a couple different factors we always try to think about of who we know will be returning, what shows we can do with those returning people, and we want to make it different than the year before. We don't want to kind of just do a Disney show every year, and it's yeah. just this fan to see Disney thing every year after year, so we kind of have the mix-up where we had Happy Days, a very realistic kind of show, and then Willy Wonka, a very fantastical show, and everything. So um, that comes into play too, and everything. But we—that's a good point. We definitely, you know, don't ignore the entire cast and everything, but it does have to come down to kind of looking at it well, from a professional perspective. You really do. You really do, because if you have predominantly young females and very few males, you're not going to. You're not going to do Les Mis, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, and um, so you have to think about who, who traditionally, you know, who has, who are the regulars, like we have fabulous actors like, like Diana Demers, she's an amazing ca character actor, comes, she's with us every year, she's really, she's really a member of the family. So she was, we should mention, she was Maria and Lend Me a Tenor, yeah. and uh, Augustus Gloop's mother. Yes, and, uh, last year. And she's a tremendous character actress. She's really wonderful to work with. But one of the things that I love every year when we do auditions, we, we pick a show that we think we can cast, but we're, then you have to like wipe, wipe your mind clean and be very, very open at auditions. Because I promise you, every single year, you're going to have wonderful surprises at the audition. The, the young woman who is playing Belle in Beauty and the Beast was last year and all her years with us, this quiet, sweet little girl in the chorus who never said boo. And then she came to rehearsal, never had a voice lesson in her life, came to, her, uh, to auditions and sang for us. And I was like, oh my gosh, where did that voice come from? <laughs> she is fabulous. Well, I can't wait for Wallingford to hear her sing, you know, and I, I, I don't know why she was hiding it or maybe she just discovered or just found the confidence to let that voice out that it used to just be, you know, in the shower, you know, or in, or in her bedroom or singing along to the radio, but and she's wonderful. And they will have the opportunity to hear that voice on uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Sheehan High School in Wallingford. Again, the show begins at uh, 7.30 p.m. Over at Shannon. Do you get a lot of the, the same people return year, year after year, do you find? Or it's, you a, it's a mix, yeah, we do. Especially in the adults. The adults have, uh, program has been really growing. Like Dave, from who played Saunders, is coming yes. back. He's actually Ralph Cramden. <laughs> we found a newcomer, Jason Michaels, who's an amazing Ed Norton. You know, it's like, so it's, it's a real mix. We do, um, I would say, the, the children, it depends on, on what their interests are. So some kids, like Hannah and Erica, have been with us since they were really little. Mm -hmm. And some kids will come for a couple summers and then move on to another interest or something. So think of it. We always get new, and we always have returning. But we've grown every year. It's, the shows have gotten bigger and bigger every year. I remember uh, Max Bloomstock last, yeah. last year. I asked him, and he just said he wants to be in Hamilton. <laughs> I didn't expect the line. The kid was yeah. awesome. Yeah, so yeah. Who was, was Mike TV? Is there a role that you have not played yet that you would like to, either here in Wallingford or there further are along? Plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have uh, let's see, six minutes and thirty seconds. Uh, Hamlet has always been a big one for me. I enjoy a lot of Shakespeare stuff. I've done a couple in the past, and yeah, I would love to play Hamlet. Um, I already have like three of his monologues memorized. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm getting there. Um, the newly, somewhat newly released uh, musical Matilda. I would love to play Mrs. Trunchbull in that. Uh, yeah. It's such a fun role. And um, on the West End was played by a male, um, and just a really hysterical and fun role. So 
maybe one year when that cut becomes available, we'll do that and yeah. all. I promised. You know, any chance to act, I'll take it. Um, nothing specific, but. She's a swing this year. Yeah. And for folks that don't know, um, that's an actor who is able to jump into many parts in the same show. Character change, costume change. She's the Wicked Witch. She's um, King, and I. King and I. She's uh, Lady Tiang, the head, head wife of the king. She's um, also, is it Maude Dunlop? Maude. Maude Dunlop and uh, Music Man. So she's she's con and then she's a featured dancer, I, and, and I probably left a few of those. Out. <laughs> <laughs> and if we have a gap and, and people aren't ready for the next scene, I know Megan can grab her and say, "Hannah, go do something." <laughs> <laughs> I promise we won't do that. <laughs> um, if someone goes to the play and, and, and sees it and says, "You know, next year, I'd like to be part of WCT," how, how could they do that? We have on uh, we have a Facebook page, Wallingford Community Theater. You know we have our email, we have our website. All of those are, are on the Facebook page. Plus, they're on every program that we ever put out there. So it's it, you just drop me a line and I can put you on a mailing list. Um, we get a lot of new folks that way. Um, in fact, Mike, um, who plays the king, uh, Mike Kochi, who plays yes. plays yes. the king and Gaston. Um, he came to see Lemmy Tanner. He lives here in, in Wallingford, and he's got a, a great uh, bass, operatic, classical trained voice, and it really is amazing. Um, so that's going to be a thrill for the audience as well. He came to see Lemmy Tanner, and he said, oh, I didn't know we had this. I want to do this. And he came to auditions. You know, I think he sang uh, something from Les Mis for his audition. And we were like, oh, okay, I think you're in. <laughs> yeah, the Facebook is probably the best spot. Yeah. We update that constantly, and yeah. we tell yeah. weeks in advance when we have auditions coming up and everything, so people yeah. will know. And you just come and audition, and you know, with the summer, no one gets cut, no one so gets everyone's cut. there and everything. And we generally audition for summer, I'd say about the second week of May at the Park and Rec. And uh, I would say somewhere from the middle to the end of January, we audition at the Library Wine Bar and Bistro. Um, for the repertory. What is tougher, comedy or drama, and what? Comedy, it's all about the timing, and it has to be very precise or a joke will fall flat, and then the show becomes boring. Whereas drama, you just, you know, have to act dramatically and... You go deep. They, <laughs> the audience will get it right away. Yeah. Yeah. But if a joke is off by even, like, a millisecond, yeah. it won't land on the audience well, yeah. and they'll just stare at you blank face. <laughs> And Hannah, yeah, I, have you done? Yeah, I really got to experience that with Brighton Beach Memoirs. Um, you know, and, y and you say your line, it's, and it's supposed to be funny, but if it's not the right timing, you're waiting for the audience to laugh, but they don't laugh because they don't, they, they don't think it's funny. So it's kind of difficult as the actor because you're waiting for the audience to laugh at something, or the audience will laugh at something that you didn't expect they would laugh at. So I think comedy is definitely... Uh, harder. I don't. I, I kind of feel even keel with them, but um, I remember being very young in something, and a uh, newspaper review had said something about I had natural timing, and I, I think I was so young I didn't even know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> Is that good? <laughs> you know, but yeah, I think pretty much um, I sense it. I think it's harder to teach comedy yeah. because it's harder to teach something. I think. I think as your dancer, it's, it was easier for me to teach timing with her if I put it in an analogy like that kind of thing. Drama is more about going within and finding something and bring, being able to bring it out. Mm -hmm. To me, that's simpler, I think. But um, comedy, teaching comedy is, I think, difficult because it's, it's hard to say it in words. You feel it more than you can say it. With less than a minute. One more time, Wallingford Community Theater presents an evening on Broadway celebrating 10 years of musicals done by the Wallingford Theater. Performances are Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, August 3rd, 4th, and 5th at Sheehan High School in Wallingford. The show begins at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are available online at wctheater.brownpapertickets.com or at Gallagher's Travel Shop, Amici Salon and Spa, and Jeremiah's, or from cast members. If you can track them down, all 100 of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, $15 for adults and $10 for children.
12 and under. Mary Ellen, thank you for joining us. Oh, thanks, Mary. Thank, thank you. Thank thank you. you. This has been great. As an old runner, I shouldn't say break a leg. But thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you soon. And go, Eric Schrader.